In this video, I will introduce the BERT algorithm and dive into the process of transforming the raw product review text into embeddings that can readily be understood by BERT algorithm. BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers, which is a neural network based technique for training NLP based models. Before diving into the BERT algorithm, I will highlight a few differences between blazing text and BERT at a very high level. As you can see here, blazing text is based on word to vec whereas BERT is based on transformer architecture. Both blazing text and BERT generate word embeddings. However, blazing text operates at word level whereas BERT operates at a sentence level. Additionally, Using the bidirectional nature of the transformer architecture, BERT can capture context of a word. Let me clarify with an example. First, blazing text learns word level embeddings for all the words that are included in the training corpus. These vectors or embeddings are then projected into a high dimensional vector space. So, similar words will generate vectors that are close together and these are represented very close to each other in the learned vector space. Take for example the word dress. The embedding that is generated by blazing text for the word dress is shown on the screen here. Regardless of where the word dress appears in a sentence, the embedding generated for that particular portion of the sentence is always going to be the same which means blazing text is not really capturing the context of the word dress in a sentence. Contrast that to BERT where the input is not the word but the sentence itself. The output once again is embedding but this time embedding is based on three individual components token, segment and position. How exactly to do this transformation from a sentence into then embedding that consists of these three individual embeddings you will see in the next video. Let's take the example of these two sentences. I love the dress. I love the dress but not the price. Obviously the context of the word dress is different in these two sentences. But can take into consideration the words that come prior to the word dress as well as the words that follow the word dress. Using this bidirectional nature of the transformer architecture, BERT is able to capture the context. So the embeddings that are generated for the word dress in these two sentences will be completely different. However, the length of the embeddings in these two sentences is going to be fixed. With BERT, you encode sequences. Here is an end-to-end -end example of converting a sequence into BERT embeddings that can be readily used by the BERT algorithm. I will build out the process of converting the raw review text from the product review dataset into BERT embeddings that can be used by BERT algorithm. I will start with the input to this process. As you can see here, the input is an input sequence. You will notice that my input sequence has just one sentence. The input sequence could also consist of two different sentences, which is much more applicable for NLP tasks such as generating question and answer pages. Once I have the input sequence, the next step is to apply word piece tokenization. Word piece tokenization is a technique that is used to segment words into subwords and is based on pre-trained models with a dimension of 768. Here, you will see the tokens that are generated from the input sequence. In addition to the tokens coming from the individual words of the sentence, you also see a special token CLS. CLS specifies that this is a classification problem. If my input sequence consisted of multiple sentences, then I would see another special token, SEP, that separates the tokens from the individual sentences. Once I have the word piece tokens, the next step is to apply token embedding. 
To determine token embedding for the individual tokens, all I have to do is simply look up the tokens in the 768 dimension vector that I mentioned before. Here, the token CLS gets an embedding of 101 because that is the position of CLS in that 768 dimension. Similarly, the token love gets a token embedding of 2293. The token this gets a token embedding of 2023 and so on. Next step is to perform segment embedding. Segment embedding becomes much more important when there are multiple sentences in the input sequence. The segment ID of zero represents that a sentence is the first sentence in the sequence. And similarly, the segment embedding of one represents that it is a second sentence in the input sequence. Here, I have only one sentence in my input sequence. So for all the individual tokens, I get a segment embedding of zero. Next step is to apply position embedding. The position embedding determines the index position of the individual token in the input sequence. Here, my input sequence consists of four tokens. So based on a zero based index, you can see the position embedding tokens for all the tokens. The position embedding for the token CLS is zero. The position embedding for the token love is one and so on. Once I have the three individual embeddings, it's time to pull all of these together. The final step includes determining an element wise sum of the position, segment and token embedding that have been previously determined. So the final embedding is of the dimension 14768 in this particular case. And that makes sense because I started with one input sequence that consisted of three different words. And I applied the word piece tokenization that has pre-trained models of dimension 768. Now this word embedding can be applied directly to the BERT algorithm as an input. I will introduce the libraries and APIs to generate BERT embeddings from raw text programmatically. For this purpose, you will use the scikit-learn libraries. From the scikit-learn, you will use the Roberta tokenizer class. Before jumping into the code, I will briefly introduce the Roberta model. Roberta model is built on top of BERT model but it modifies a few hyperparameters and the way the model is trained. It also uses a lot more training data than the original BERT model. This results in significant performance improvements in a variety of NLP tasks when compared to the original BERT model. You will learn more about Roberta model architecture in week two. If you would like to read more about this model, please have a look at this research paper. You will find the link in the additional resources section for this week. Time to look at some code. To start using the Roberta tokenizer, you first import the class and then you construct an object of tokenizer. To construct the tokenizer class, you specify the pre-trained model. The pre-trained model we use here is Roberta base. Once you have the tokenizer object in hand, you will run the encode plus method. The encode plus method expects a few parameters as you can see here. One of the parameters is the review. This is the raw review text from your product review dataset, which is the text that needs to be encoded. You will also see a flag, a true or false flag, whether to add special tokens to the embeddings or not. You will also see the max length parameter that specify the maximum sequence length along with a few other parameters. A brief note on the maximum sequence length parameter. This is a hyperparameter that is available on both BERT and Roberta models. The max sequence length parameter specifies the maximum number of tokens that can be passed into BERT model with a single sample. To determine the right value for this hyperparameter, you can analyze your data set. Here you can see the word distribution of the product review data set. This analysis indicates that all of our reviews consist of 
115 or less words. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one mapping between the word count and the input token count, but it can be a good indication. You can definitely experiment with different values for this parameter. For the purposes of this use case and the product review data set, setting this max sequence length to the value of 128 has been proven to work well. Once you determine all the necessary parameters, generating the embeddings is really very straightforward. You simply run the encode plus method. However, the real challenge comes in when you have to generate these embeddings at scale. This is exactly the challenge that you will tackle in this week's lab. The challenge is performing feature engineering at scale, and to address the challenge, you will use Amazon SageMaker Processing. Amazon SageMaker Processing allows you to perform data-related tasks such as pre-processing, post-processing, and model evaluation at scale. SageMaker Processing provides this capability by using a distributed cluster. By specifying some parameters, you can control how many nodes and the type of the nodes that make up the distributed cluster. SageMaker processing job executes on the distributed cluster that you configure. SageMaker processing provides a built-in container for sklearn. So the code that you use with sklearn and Roberta tokenizes should work out of the box using SageMaker processing. As you can see here, SageMaker processing expects data to be in S3 bucket. So you specify the S3 location where your raw input data is stored and SageMaker processing executes the sklearn script on the raw data. Finally, the output which consists of the embeddings is persisted back into an S3 bucket. Let's look at some code again. To use SageMaker processing with scikit-learn, you start by importing a class called sklearn processor along with a couple of other classes that capture the input and the output of the processing job. Then you set up the processing cluster using the sklearn processor object. To this object, you pass in the framework version of the scikit-learn you would like to use as well as the instance count and the instance type that make up the distributed cluster. Once you configure the cluster, you simply run the run method with a few parameters. As expected, these parameters include a script to execute. This is a Python script that consists of the scikit-learn code to generate the embeddings. Additionally, you provide the processing input that specifies the location of the input data in the S3 bucket. And finally, you specify where in S3 the output should go to. And you mention that using the processing output construct. Pulling all of these together, this is how your lab for this week is going to look like. You will convert the review text from the product review dataset into BERT embeddings using the scikit-learn container on SageMaker Processing.